Hello, everyone. In this video, we're going to look at a measurement of spread for skewed data. That value that we compute to measure spread in this case is called the inner quartile range. So for skewed data, so recall this is data that looks like right skewed, left skewed. We want to use the median and the inner quartile range to describe the center or where we would expect data and the spread of the data since it is essentially ignores the values of any outliers. So in our previous video, we looked at means and standard deviations for symmetric data. Here, we're looking at medians and inner quartile range for skewed data. So let's compute uh, this inner quartile range. So to start, we need to first look at the quartiles or define or compute the quartiles of our data. So let's get into what that means. So if we think of our data as this chunk here, then the middle data value we've seen is the median, which I'll label as an M. And recall 50% of our data should land or does land on both sides of that median. So then if we further chunk up our data, data into quarters, we have determined our quartiles. So here I'll label my Q1. Quartile one here, Q3, quartile three. So our quartiles chunk up our data further into quarters, as I said. So we should expect 25% of our data to land between each of these quarters. So let's compute these quartiles um, with these particular data sets. So we have two ways of measuring or finding the Q1 and Q3, often called Q1 and Q3. Long word is quartile one, quartile two, three. Uh, but if we have an odd number of values, then we compute the following way. So as we saw in the last video, the median for an odd number of data values is this middle number here. So we actually see the median is one of our measurements. And so now then to compute the quartiles, what we use is we only use the data to the left and the right of that median. So then the first quartile, what we're gonna do is find the median of this first chunk of data. So for us, we don't have a middle value given these two data values. So what we're gonna do is find the average of these two values. So for us, Q1 is gonna be the average of eight and three. So I'll write that here on the side. Q1 is going to be eight plus three over two, which eight plus three is 11 divided by two is 5.5 .5 or five and a half. So 5.5 .5 is gonna be Q1. And then for Q3, we just use the values um, to the right of the median or that are larger than the median. But again, we're not including the median in our calculation. So here we'd have to take an average of these two values. So for us, Q3 is gonna be 15 plus 18 over two, which when we add up and divide by two, we should get 16.5. So here Q3 is between these two data values and we get 16.5. So if we had more odd, if we had more numbers in our data set, then we'd carry out the same process. So say we have here are my numbers. I'm just going to represent numbers with dots. So I have an odd number of numbers. So this center number, oops, didn't want to do that. This center number is our median. Then the Q1 would be the median of this first chunk of data. So here would be Q1. And here would be Q2. So now let's look at a data set containing an even number of values. So for us, an even number of values would mean the median is in between the two center values. So our median here would be the average of 12 and 15. So I'll write that out. Median here is 12 plus 15 over two, 
which comes out to 13.5. And you might think that I'm making these calculations quickly, but that's just because I have a lot of practice in making such calculations. So it just takes a lot of time, a lot of patience with yourself, and a lot of practice. You too can be fast at adding and dividing. All right, so now for the quartiles. So the first quartile is, I'm gonna take the center value or that median of the first half of the data. So because I have an odd number here, that first half of the data is just gonna be this middle number. So here it would be my Q1 is eight. And then Q3 would be the middle or the median of my second half of the data. So that would be 18, Q3. Nice work. So now we're just gonna look at a bit more language dealing with these types of measurements. So first of all, the median, which we could call the median the second quartile, is the middle value or the blank percentile. Well, it would be the 50th percentile. That's because 50% of the data are below that value. So the percentile, is also the percentage of the data that's below that value. Now the first quartile or Q1 is the 25th percentile. And why is that? Well, because 25% of the data are below that value. So take a moment and think about how you'd fill in these next set of blanks. The third quartile then is blank percentile because what percentage of the data are below that value? Take a moment to pause the video and think about this for yourself. All right, after thinking about it and maybe reflecting on this image that we have up here, we can consider, well, how much of the data is below this Q3? Well, we have 25, 50, 75% of the data is below that Q3. So, Filling in our blanks here, the third quartile or Q3 is the 75th percentile and 75% of the data are below that value. So now what's common uh, in writing out or when computing such numbers is to write the numbers, these quartiles and median in a specific way. This specific way is often referred to as the five number summary. So these five numbers are very useful in telling us how, uh, or in describing rather the data. So what are they? are they? Well, these five numbers are described by the minimum, the Q1, the median, Q3, and the maximum. So I'll write that out for future reference. So if you're asked to give the five number summary, it's the list of five numbers in order as follows, where we start with the minimum, Then Q1, followed by the median, followed by Q3, and the maximum. So our next term that we're gonna learn is the range. The range describes the distance between the minimum and the maximum. So to compute the range, we just start with the maximum subtract the minimum. It's not a good measure spread because it is heavily influenced by outliers. If you have an outlier that is very high, then you'll see that in the maximum. And so that'll really impact what your range is. So I'm gonna write that out. So the range is not a good measure of spread. Though it does tell us where you know, the, the difference between our max and min. So it tells us the maximum possible distance between any two data values. But why is it not a good measure of spread? Well, because it's influenced by outliers. So what is a good measure of spread when we're using skewed data? Well, that's the inner quartile range often abbreviated as IQR. The IQR is the width of the middle 50% of the data. 
So the IQR is simply computed by taking Q3, third quartile, and subtracting Q1. And this is a good measure of spread for skewed data. So let's compute these numbers for our particular example. So first of all, that five number summary. So recall the five number summary is min, Q1, median, Q3, max in that order. So that would look like for us three, eight, 13.5, 18 and 20. All right, what about the range? So I'll let you take a moment to compute that for yourself. Feel free to pause the video right now and we will pick up and compare answers. So range is max minus min, 20 minus three, which is 17. And then how about IQR? I'll give you a moment. Awesome, Q3 minus Q1, so we get 18 minus eight, which is 10. So as I described down here, the range is affected by outliers while the inner, Q, inner quartile range is not. So what if we changed up this data set we just looked at, change this number, this maximum 20, put in a 205 and see how this impacts the measurements that we just collected. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video and find the median, Q1, Q3, range, and IQR of this data set. All right, I'll give you a moment to pause the video. All right, when you're ready, we're gonna compare answers in this next part of the page. All right, so let's look together. So first let's write out that five number summary. So we can see that our median is still gonna be here at the 13.5. Our first quartile is gonna be still eight. Our third quartile is still 18. So we can see that nothing so far has changed as in terms of our median Q1 or Q3. So first let's write out that five number summary. So the five number summary will be min Q1, median Q3 and max. So how has the five number summary changed? Well, the maximum has changed. So we see that the maximum and sometimes minimum are really affected by those outliers because they often are the outliers. So if we compute the range, well, now that's gonna be 205 minus three, which is 202. Whoa, so what did we compute first for the range when we had 20 as our maximum? Skipping back over here, our range was 17 before, but now throw in a 205 and our range becomes 202. So we see that that range changes a lot. So now what about the IQR? So IQR would be the difference in Q3 minus Q1. So for us, that would be 18 minus eight, which is 10. How does that compare to the previous example? Awesome, we see that it's the same value. So we have the same IQR, even with this large outlier that we have in this data set B. So then in summary, what did we find? Well, for this data, the median is 13.5 with an IQR of 10. And just to summarize, again, we use median and IQR for skewed data or data with outliers. 
And just to note, that doesn't mean that we can't use median and IQR for symmetric data, but we do know that for symmetric data, uh, the, the mean and standard deviation will, will be a similar measurement. All right, thanks for watching everyone. In the next video, we'll look at box plots together.